Hi there, my name is Akash and I'm going to be demonstrating an application which is built through processing and super collider. Processing acts as the visual interface here and, and super collider acts as a sound generator. So it's a visual synthesizer where you can draw on the screen and when you draw on the screen processing will send OSC messages through the network and super collider picks these messages up and interprets them as sound. This synth also supports a MIDI controller. So all you need to do is plug in your favorite MIDI controller and play around with a patch like you would usually do. Uh, it supports polyphony and multi-touch as well. But for today, we're not going to be discussing any of those aspects. We're just going to be talking about the the point and click aspect of it so that you can you can work with no external hardware as such so all we need to do is boot the server on super collider and run the functions that are required and on the processing front we just have to run the sketch The processing sketch opens up as a, as a visual window, which is resizable, and it's built responsively so that it handles different screen sizes, uh, so that it can be ported onto like a web browser or mobile app, mobile platforms. Uh, so it's built responsively to handle different screen sizes and the components resize accordingly. Now what we have here is a palette of colors to play with. Let's just choose one and go with it. As you can imagine, each color represents a different tonal characteristic, different sound, a different synthesizer altogether. And we can, we can click anywhere on the screen to activate notes. And this sends a message to Super Collider and displays the sound in the background. We've also got a whole host of parameters to play around with. The first one being the volume knob, which controls the global volume. Second one, the, the pan knob, which controls the pan position, either on the left or the right. This can be overridden later using a pan modulation, but we'll come back to that later. We've also got a tone knob, which acts as a, as a low pass filter, which cuts off the brightness of the sound so it either makes it gloomy or bright. We've also got a standard ADSR envelope here, which controls the attack, decay, sustain, and release phases. The release phase is activated when the mouse click is released, and this sends a mouse off listener to, to be activated inside Super Collider, which triggers the release phase. The speed control controls how fast the animation is rendered on the screen. We can either slow it down or speed it up. We've also got an octave control where you can decrement or increment an octave. But before that, we have a toggle switch for the for displaying the information on the screen. This includes relevant information such as the note key, uh, the, the synthesizer, the name of the synthesizer that's on, and the octave that we're on. This gives us a visual aid to determine which note we want to select when we click anywhere on the screen. We can also switch either from an octave view or a full view of all seven octaves of a keyboard. On the far right side, we have a dedicated modulation section where you can change the, the depth and rate of modulation of a few parameters such as volume, pitch, and pan. In the auxiliary section, we have a reverb control which controls the, the mix that is being sent to a reverb generator. We've also got a delay section where you can change the delay time the feedback and the delay mix.
these color controls on the on the left are patch specific controls each patch has a specific set of parameters that can be varied for the first patch which is an fm synthesizer we can change the frequency of modulation and the index of modulation of the modulating signal we've also got a decaying envelope of the index and this the duration controls how long the envelope lasts for we can get some really unique sounds and patches by changing these few parameters and experimenting with different values Let's go over to the second patch, which is an arpeggiator. We've got several options in this patch. First one being the speed of arpeggiation. You can also change the number of octaves through which the arpeggiation is replicated. We've also got a reverse switch and a loop switch. The, the reverse switch basically reiterates the same pattern in the reverse direction and the loop keeps repeating it and endlessly till, till the mouse is let go off. In the semitone section, we can, ch we can specifically choose which of the semitones that we want arpeggiated. Right now, a major scale is chosen. We can play around and select different semitones so we get a unique pattern. The third patch is very simple and very basic. It's a theremin, it's a classic theremin patch. And as you can see, there are no parameters that you can modify with this patch. The visuals are slightly different for this patch. The prime reason being that this patch behaves much differently than a regular synthesizer. With this patch, you can hold, hold the mouse down and move around the screen, which, inter which internally produces new pitch data an amplitude data which is sent back to Super Collider. You can get some spooky sounds from it. I guess that's what a term is, but for, I'm not so sure. The fourth patch is a sampler. It's a very classic sampler in the sense that you can load a wave file onto the memory and you can play back the wave file at different speeds. I'm just going to choose an acoustic guitar file. Let's just go back to the octave view. The reference control determines the note number for which the playback is original, meaning that at note number 60, the playback rate is 1, and below note number 60, the playback is decreased, and above it, the playback, is, playback rate is increased. The final patch here is a, is a vocal synthesizer. It's pretty experimental as of now. The noise parameter determines how much noise goes into the vocal sound. If, uh, if it's one, then the sound produced is a pure tone. If it's less than one, then more noise is being added to account for the, for the nasal sound produced by the human voice. The resonance parameter signifies the strength of the formant region. You can also choose different vocal ranges and styles from bass, tenor, counter tenor, alto and soprano. This doesn't necessarily change the voice per se, 
but when you're using it at different octaves you're better off choosing the right style because the formant region being chosen suits different octaves now the following section which is the vowel section is the interesting bit you can choose different vowel sounds that the formant region is excited the upper section determines the, the, the vowel on the top half of the screen and the lower section determines the vowel for the lower section of the screen so there's a smooth interpolation between the two so you can, you, you can morph between one vowel tone to another Since I haven't demonstrated the modulation, I'm just going to pull up the volume modulation and the pan modulation. The pan modulation usually works best when you're wearing earphones. Well, there you have it. It's a, it's a visual synth. It's a work in progress, but you can definitely try it out for yourself. All you need to do is install processing and super collider, which are free softwares and you can download the code from the link in the description below and just follow the instructions.